Keith Bowen here. This is Hard Rock University Shop Edition. Now I'm uh, building a new iteration of my separation table and I had to make a rather complex part and I thought you might like to see how you go about in the field without CAD, without a brake, without a shear, without any of that fancy tooling crap making something this complicated fairly easily. Okay, so we start from the beginning. I have a tabletop on my extraction table that's 16 inches wide <coughs> and it's going to have tailings and concentrates coming off the end. I want to collect both of them and I also want to dewater the tailings. The spot at which they're separated is five inches from the end. The concentrates will have a little bit of water. The cons and that water go into a bucket and the overflow goes back into recycle. The tailings will have lots of solids. It's actually going to go over a screen. So, I need something 16 inches wide that will screen the tailings to dewater them and collect the concentrates and send the water from the tailings back into the recycle tub. Now, I'm going to do all of this without fancy CAD. Okay? I'm going to do this with what I call BAD. Brain Assisted Design. <laughs> because it's actually not that hard to do. By using construction paper and a razor knife and a few little geometric concepts, you can build a model, tweak it, use tape instead of welds and things, and, and just check it out real quickly. Now I've done some previous testing so I know exactly what I need to do. First thing I do is I'm going to measure 16 inches along the side here. Right there. Now I need to go 8 inches in which is right here. And I also need to go one, two, three, four, five, right there. Also go eight inches in. There is part of the back wall, the vertical wall where it's dropping off. This is where the tailings will go. Now since I want, there's a relatively low flow and I want all the concentrates and water to come to one point, I'm just going to make this a single slope and drain it out right there. Now, in order to confine this, I'm just going to make a triangle here that folds up against the trough that's formed here. Now, by previous experimentation, I happen to know that what I need is 12 inches from here and 8 inches from here. Now I have a piece of fishing line. This is actually steel fishing line. And I'm going to use this as a compass. So, 8 inches this point here. Come on. Oh. Puts me somewhere near that arc. And 12 inches from this line puts me somewhere there. So now what I do is take this and measure a precise 12 inches. Right to there. And a 
precise 8 inches, and I get this point right here. And I take, connect that point to the two corners. And I've got that part. Now what I need is the trough that actually goes like this. So, to design that, first thing I do is I'll get another sheet of paper here. I know as it comes off the table that I want it to come out 10 inches. So, the measure bring this in a little bit. Uh, there's ten inches. <coughs> Just draw a light construction line here. Now my previous Experimentation said that 8 inches is fine there. So, go 8 inches here. This is just a reference point. Now, I want to come up 3 inches from that. So many different ways of doing it. This is where the bottom will come up, and then there will be a, a side up here to keep the pulp confined to a channel way with a screen at the bottom. So I also need to mark this here. light construction line here. That would be the line of the screen. Heavier construction line here. That's where the trough will be. This is what one of the sides is going to look like. So, what I do is take this and actually cut it out. Now the advantage of using construction paper, aside from it being cheap and easy, is that cutting and welding is real simple. Razor, knife, and tape. There we have a side. Now, we know that this is five inches wide and it's going to have two sides. So, first thing I do, where's my other pen? And let's see, that is the bottom. Now, I do not know how long to make these lines. However, because the bottom is going to be the same length as the bottom of the side, I can just use this as a ruler. I don't have to measure that first. I can just go straight to it. Come on. is 10 and 3 eighths. See, I didn't need CAD to figure that out. 
all I had to do was be able to draw. Using simple principles of geometry, you can figure out certain things. So I take this, lay it right here. Oops. Pretty close. And I flip it the other way. the same thing. Now take the razor knife, cut this out. like as if you were cutting the sheet metal of which this is already finally going to be made. Except this is a heck of a lot easier than using a grinder or saber saw. Now if you had a plasma cutter, which I don't, that'd be pretty easy. Now I have parts to make the chute. This is the part that makes the backing and closes in the one launder there. So this is going to go like this. Now there's two ways of laying it out. One would be like this, but I run into an issue here. And that is, in order to cut this where I need it, I have to cut that back. Now I can do that. But I'm going to wind up with a very narrow trough here. On the other hand, I could also do it this way. Either way will work. Now, today is Sunday. And because it's Sunday, I can't buy any steel. <laughs> Those rascals, they want to take a day off for some reason. So I've only got the steel that I have on hand to see what I can work with. Now I've checked and the piece of steel I have is 18 and a half inches and this is 19 and a half. On the other hand, if I do it this way, I'm also right at the limit. So, what I'll do... goes like this. So that goes like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay it out like this. That gives me exactly what I want. Neither one will actually do what I want it to do. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to transpose these points onto this sheet of paper and then cut it out and I'll be ready to lay it on my sheet steel. What I'll do is I'll just cut a little piece of steel off, weld it to the edge, grind it down, everything will be fine. Let me get this all transposed and cut out and then get the sheet steel. Okay, so here's our template. I've transposed it onto the metal, added a little bit here. One nice thing about metal is you can add. And then to make sure that I've done this right, I can fold it on the seams. Oh goodness. And 
That looks pretty good. Looks like what I want it to do. So, all I have to do is cut this out and bend these on these lines. Now, as anyone who's done any sheet metal work knows, bending stuff like that can be kind of tricky. But I have a trick that I'll show you that makes it real simple, especially when working in complicated stuff like this where you can't just use a brake. Okay, if you had one bend to make, you put it in a brake, bend it, it works fine. However, A, you may not have a brake, and B, when you get a complex shape like this, when you're trying to bend this here and that there and that there and turn it into a box, life gets real complicated. So, let me cut it out and show you how to do that. Okay, well, the camera cut out while I was actually cutting out the uh, big piece. And so, I'm going to make just a little pyramid right here is all. Four triangles, each one with four inch sides. Four inch here, four inch here, four inch here. There's four equilateral triangles. It's going to be a little bit of a squat pyramid, but that's okay with me. Now I've cut most of it out for time. To make it bend right here without massive curvatures, I want a real sharp crease of a bend. So. By notching each one of the lines, I've drastically weakened the metal right there. So, let me put on some gloves here, because it's going to get a little hot when I try and bend it. I'll finish cutting it out, and then we'll bend it. I may have to notch it a little more, it's pretty thick. By the way, this is called a grinding, I mean a cutting wheel. See how thin it is? Don't try and do that with a regular grinding wheel or life will suck. Now I can just take this, see how it bends sharply on those lines. And there you have a pyramid. Beautiful, sharp brake lines, at least reasonably beautiful and sharp without having to use a brake, no fancy tools, just a grinder. And guess what? Almost everyone's got a grinder. If you don't, they're really cheap. So that's how you do it. Now, back to the other part. There you have it. Your basic launder. Concentrates go in here. Tailings go onto a screen. Get dumped out there. The dirty water goes down there. All I got to do is put the outlets on it and it's done. That's how it works. Everything's a simple plain surface. Just get all the shapes and draw them next to each other and then lay it out on a piece of paper, fold it, make sure it actually works, then put it onto a piece of sheet metal notch the bends with a cutting wheel with a grinder and bend it. Weld it together and you're done. You can make some pretty complex shapes without computers and all that fancy machine tooling and brakes and, and everything else. Grinder, welder, ruler. <laughs> there you go. Be bad.
when you don't have CAD. Happy prospecting and keep it safe out there.